Hey everybody, Josh Regular with Corporate Concepts here. Coming this week with just a, an update on some of the activities of the shop. Um, it's been kind of a busy week, but a non-productive week. Um, decided to sell the, the big hard inch lathe here behind me. Um, it just it was it was a good idea. Um, I used it some, but the the manual lathe is just too hard for me to operate with with the uh, combination of the cripple hands and the. Uh, the fact I can't get underneath of it, it's got a large table underneath of it. Uh, uh, it's all part of the frame and all the motor and stuff's down there. And I looked at retrofitting it, I looked at kind of chopping it up and trying to make it work better and concluded I'm, I'm better off just to try getting a, a decent, similar sized CNC lathe. I'm um, looking into an MCO 220 or an MCO 320 um, or maybe a Dynamite. Um, I believe they're a 3000 series lathe. Um, if anybody has any suggestions on some bench top um, size lathes uh, with a one inch or larger spindle through hole, uh, definitely looking for some suggestions on that. Um, I'm even considering maybe just buying a, a Grizzly or something like that and doing a CNC retrofit on it. Um, getting underneath the, the bench is really, really turned out to be critical for me on using equipment. Um, Hey, with a, I wear the seat belt in my chair to keep from falling over since I have no trunk stability and I, I need to be able to get underneath to really get up and work on things trying to stretch all the way into work on it. It's just just too hard. So um, yeah, definitely if anybody has suggestions, definitely comment down below. Uh, in the meantime, um, shipping this out this week and then uh, I'm actually going to upgrade the little Sakai a uh, little two axis lathe that I got. Uh, it's a little Japanese, uh, similar to the, the small little bench top Harbor Freight models, but a nice little Japanese one, pretty precise. Um, getting some ER40 collet holders for it. And I uh, got to do a couple little tweaks on it to make it a little bit better to be able to keep pumping out the build aluminum knobs. Um, the, those will still be able to be done though. That cuts aluminum pretty well. It's a little light duty to be doing much steel work with. Uh, luckily, I don't do much steel except when I'm making some adapters and stuff for you know use here in the shop. Uh, working on some stuff on the CNC router too that um, should have a new product on the on the market here in the next couple of weeks, and I'll definitely highlight that in one of these videos. Uh, but just kind of been one of the weeks trying to trying to regroup and uh, figure out what what equipment I need and don't need and. Uh, um, also working on the injection motor a bit. Um, I, I keep going back and forth on what to do about the housings for the USB chargers. Right now I'm 3D printing them. That works um, as long as the order numbers stay low. Um, when I start getting a lot of orders, that gets hard. I uh, looked into getting some prototype injection molding done, um, but I'd have to raise the price on the chargers. Uh, it, it's, it's about $10 just a piece just in the plastic that's not including the circuit board or the connectors um, or the time to build them and so I don't really want to go that route um, still trying to get this injection motor behind me going um, that looks like it's going to be the best route at least in the, the, the medium term um, I might do some uh, silicone molding and uh, start, start doing some silicone molded versions um, that, that are kind of an in-between um, process they're they're a little faster than 3d printing um about the same cost but faster um and if, if i don't get the injection motor going soon i think that's going to be the easiest route to go on those um so we'll keep you posted on that um, meanwhile you can order them I, i'm building one at a time still on the 3d printer but i, I can get them out in about two to three days um so those those are still pumping out as quick as we can um i'll, I'll bring you some updates about what we're doing on the little lathe um, hopefully in next week or the week after we'll, we'll be doing that video uh, and in thank luck we'll, we'll be upgrading this this old hardinge um, you know getting rid of this big big beast for another big beast of similar size um, there there's a lot of them out there on the used market uh, a lot of tech schools and stuff unfortunately are ending their programs a lot of high schools are ending their programs and so more and more of the mid-size equipment that's perfect for, for our size shop is, is coming out every every week. It, it pops up on eBay and on public surplus websites. So keep my eyes peeled. And like I said, I'd really like suggestions from, from others out there that are looking for similar size lathes. 
um, you know, something that I can get bench top. I really like the Tormach uh, 15L slant lathe. Um, looks like a really nice lathe, but again, it's got this built-in case underneath like the hard inch, uh, which is great for 99% for of the people out there that are going to buy them, but for those of us who are trying to operate from a wheelchair, that just doesn't work. And so, got to go with something bench top model, um, or at least it could be converted to a bench top model. Some of the MCOs had cases, but they're just literally a bench. They're not anything down there. Um, a lot of these lays, like the hard edge, like the Tormach, a lot of the electronics and the motors and stuff are down in that case. So you can't just get rid of it. Um, I actually looked at a lay at an auction last week that was perfect size, uh, but it it was the the casting for the lathe bed was all part of that case underneath, and so. I couldn't modify to make it work for me without completely destroying the rigidity of the machine. So it was it was back to the drawing board, and uh, yeah. Then I ran into figuring out um, things like Social Security and how net earnings from self-employment affect Social Security and monthly reporting versus annual reporting. And um, now now I got to figure out what I'm doing this month because I was selling the lathe. Uh, I, I went over what's called substantial gainful activity. So, you know, first world cripple problems. Got to figure out, uh, you know, earn too much money and you get yourself in trouble. So I may I may be investing in a lathe in the next week just to spend that money again real quick. Um, so any, anybody got any suggestions on a, on a good CNC lathe or a, or a nice lathe to retrofit to CNC? I'm not, I'm not scared of a project to retrofit. If it's a, a good solid lathe. Uh, like I say, one inch spindle uh, bore is, is critical. Um, a, a 5C call it closer would be really nice on one. Um, if anybody knows any, shoot me a comment down below, shoot me an email. Um, and until then, uh, keep watching, and we'll be back next week with some upgrade videos on the, the lathe or maybe on the router, one of the two. Um, so we'll, we'll start covering more of the CNC equipment here real soon. Thanks for watching.